You should be using two-factor authentication on every account that you can, and I'm gonna tell you why from the perspective of someone who might be trying to hack you. Hello! As the title suggests, today we're going to be talking about two-factor authentication, also known as multi-factor authentication, or as 2FA for the remainder of this video. What is it? Who should use it? How does it work? And why is it non-negotiable? Here's an easy way to know if you need 2FA. Do you do anything online? Congratulations! You need 2FA! For any account that you're logging into, you should really be using multi-factor authentication. There's so many different kinds. It's truly so easy to set up on any account that you may have, and it can really make a difference in your security. Frankly, the fact that two-factor authentication has become so prevalent speaks to the major truth that should be your biggest takeaway from this video. Passwords alone are just not secure enough anymore. First of all, the vast majority of the population still don't use secure passwords, both in that they use ones that are too simple or worse in that they never change them from the ones that are assigned by the manufacturer or distributor. But even if you're part of that glorious small percentage of the population that uses a strong password and better uses a unique strong password on every account that you have, you're still increasingly vulnerable to being hacked. And here is why from the perspective of a hacker. When you're approaching a target and developing literally a plan of attack, you will obviously start from the easiest approach and move up in difficulty from there. A super duper easy thing to do, run a brute force attack on someone's account. A brute force attack is just a script that tries a bunch of different passwords one after the other and tries to get into someone's account like one of these will work I know if I just throw enough at them. It's the reason we have those capture things that try to make you prove you're not a bot and the reason why we have automatic timeouts after too many failed login attempts. Many brute force scripts use a word dictionary. This can either be a list of common passwords or passwords leaked from a known breach or simply a list of words and numbers that are commonly found in passwords and some parameters slash instructions for the script to improvise combinations of these words. The coolest brute force scripts have parameters and inputs related to the user's information or interests they may have, like the names of their family members or their pets, the street that they were born on, you know, all the kind of information that you would get in security questions. That kind of information is also stuff that people tend to use when they make passwords, so it'll make the script better at trying to guess what that person's password may be. These scripts exist on the internet for free or for money, meaning people don't even have to know how to write their own in order to use this against you. It's also possible via a phishing attack or malware like keyloggers to steal someone's password by having them enter it into a site that you control or by monitoring their keyboard remotely to record what they type. Frankly though, if someone's trying to hack you, the easiest way is to use or be someone that you trust. Most of my Instagram DMs are people asking me to hack people that they know and are mad at. Never forget, I don't need to hack your computer when I can just hack you. So let's say I do that. Thus, 2FA. What is it? Exactly what it says. A second verification when you're trying to log into something. The more verifications, the more barriers I have to overcome in order to get into this account. This verification comes in many forms. It can be something you know, like a security question or a PIN number. Something you have, such as hardware like a YubiKey or an app on your phone. Or something you are, meaning like a fingerprint or a facial recognition scan. There are a lot of apps that can handle 2FA for you. I will link some in the description below. These will send you a push notification request when anyone tries to log into your account and or generate a unique six digit code that the portal will then request of the user. If the user is you, you can accept the push notification request or enter the 60 code. And if it's not, it's much harder for them to intercept that code or to approve that push request and therefore it is much less likely that they will be able to gain access. And if this is set up and you get a request that you don't recognize, you instantly know to deny it and change that password because the password itself has likely been compromised. Remember, if they got to that step, that means they first had to crack your password to even generate the push request. So that instantly tells you to change the password. I will make another video on choosing strong passwords and what that actually means. So many sites have 2FA possibilities now, including Instagram, Facebook, Amazon, Google, most banks. Frankly, if your bank doesn't have 2FA, don't bank there. So think of it this way. If there's any site you want me to be able to get into on one try, don't use 2FA. And also feel free to DM me your social security number and all your credit card information if that's where we're at. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do that with a straight face. I'm kidding! But if not, go to all of your security preferences on all of your accounts, see if there's 2FA, and enable it! And remember, only you can prevent the unstoppable viral dumpster fire that is a cybersecurity breach. Also, comment if you came from TikTok so I can see who the real ones are. Stay safe, kids. Till next time. I'll leave my window open, pretend you'll come inside. Can't fix what isn't broken, can